on a cold, sunny January day, the body of His late Majesty King George V starts on its last journey from Sandringham. Behind the coffin walks His Majesty the King, their Royal Highnesses the Duke of York, the Duke of Gloucester, the Duke of Kent and Lord Harwood. In the first carriage is the sorrowing figure of Her Majesty the Queen. Behind comes the long procession headed by Lord Wigram of members of the household, tenants and servants of the royal estate. Surely never before has a great man been honoured with such simplicity. The coffin is covered only with the royal standard and on it are a cross of white chrysanthemums and orchids from the Queen and a simple wreath of red carnations and white chrysanthemums from the King and other members of the royal family. And so to Wolferton Station, where the train is waiting to start its journey through the sorrowing countryside. As the train draws slowly into King's Cross Station, a silence falls over the great crowds who are lining the route from the station to Westminster Hall. Quietly the police have marshalled them. All traffic in the central area is stopped. Only the muffled peal of the bells of Westminster Abbey break the hush that falls over the Empire's capital. Her Majesty the Queen has left the procession and is driving privately to Westminster Hall for the service. But the King and his royal brothers continue to walk behind the gun carriage, the same that carried the body of King Edward VII. Down Kingsway, across the sea of heads that is Trafalgar Square. The car with Her Majesty the Queen drives into Palace Yard. And it is here, perhaps, that the crowds are thickest, the tolling of the bells, most significant of what the Empire feels today. As the procession enters Palace Yard, the Queen and the other members of the royal family are already waiting at the door. So it comes to pass that in Westminster Hall, where only a few months ago His Majesty King George V was receiving loyal addresses from Parliament, his body now lies in state. And as the imperial flag bows to the royal standard, 
his subjects prepare to pay their last tribute. 